right, so today we're just going to have a quick <clears throat> um, teardown video, and yeah, we'll just, uh, I'm going to be taking apart this bubble gun shooter thing, <clears throat> because I want the peristaltic pump out of it. Um, what's a peristaltic pump, you may ask? It is a pump that uses, instead of using compression, uh, to move fluid, it uses, um, well, it basically uses vacuum. Um, it's kind of hard to describe uh, the way it works uh, verbally, so I'm just going to extract it from this uh, thing. I should probably remove the batteries too while I'm at it. Uh, and then I'll, I'll show you how it works. Um, <clears throat> peristaltic pumps are very commonly used uh, for IV machines. Uh, because they can be used to meter very, very accurate and specific amounts of medication uh, due to the way they work. So, um, I think just about done removing chassis screws here. So we'll be able to explore into its innards shortly. Uh, is it going to be glued shut at some point, or, or did I miss? Did I miss the screw? Doesn't look like I missed a screw. Is there one? Oh, there's one hiding right there under the label. Always check under the label first. There we go. Now. Poopeth, what's going on here? <clears throat> Why are you... Oh, it's all covered in bubble solution. This is going to be messy. Oh, there we go. <clears throat> ah! Pardon me as I throw things on the floor. <clears throat> Alright. <clears throat> oh, yes. That would be a thing that will happen when you flip the lid over, Chris. I guess I don't really need to worry about saving the uh, screws, do I? Because I'm not actually going to be reassembling this when I'm done. Because I want to use the part out of it for something different. Alright, so we'll just go ahead and quick that in the trash. Um, and then we will continue uh, unburying. Oh, that's really... <laughs> I mean, I suppose that's the way... <clears throat> It completes the electrical circuit by pushing a spring against the the case of the motor. That's... I mean, I, I guess it's clever, but that's that's a pretty cheap way of... of uh, completing that circuit. Oh well. Alright, let's see. Oh, that was a bad idea. I had a cat hair on my tongue. I just pulled it off with my fingers covered with bubble solution. Blech. Blech. Alright, just trying to get rid of some of the metal work here. Alright, so what do we have going on here? Um, oh, I guess I'll just get rid of the trigger assembly too. Don't really need that. And alright, now it's time to start. Oh, no, I can remove this piece. This piece is basically just a little cup that catches the uh, extra bubble solution as it's being uh, pumped over top of this piece, which um, when you pull the trigger, uh, it wipes this across and creates a, a layer of bubble solution. Unfortunately, it doesn't work very well. I mean, you have to constantly pump the trigger, which splashes bubble solution everywhere. Reasonably decent concept, it just didn't work very well. Um, let's see, can we, oh, there we go, we can remove that piece, let's pop, maybe, pop that LED out. There's a, an LED on the front of the gun here. I probably should have, uh, turned it on for a brief period of time before I started, uh, dismantling it, but whatever. Alright, we'll pull that tube off there. Um, can we get this LED out of that? Yes, we can. There we go. All right. 
that's the thing that, that blows the bubbles. It's really interesting because the tubes that I disconnected there, uh, this isn't the right tube, but it goes into there, and then there's a channel on the inside of this plastic bit. Um, can I disconnect this or, or pop it out maybe to demonstrate how it works? Doesn't look like it. Um, certainly there's got to be a way. Uh, let's just see how to... Oh, there we go. Yeah, brilliant. Okay, so that tube... Uh, let's bring the, the focus up a little bit higher. There we go. And bring the zoom in. All right, so that tube comes into this little hole here, which is connected to a channel on the inside of this little plastic bit here. And then that, you can see there's a bunch of gross stuff in here. Maybe that's why it wasn't working too well. It's all clogged up with gunk. But anyway, uh, that channel then uh, goes all around the outside of this thing, which is covered in ridges, so that the bubble solution will leak out to the front, and then when that wiper goes across, it creates a bubble. So that's how that part works. Uh, paper towel, please. Ugh. There we go. I have somewhere a paper towel holder that I'm supposed to mount on the wall uh, so that I don't have to go constantly digging. Let's bring the focus back down to here. And we'll continue dismantling. I'm just going to wake these in the trash. There we go. All right. So now we're starting to get into the electronics part of it, where we've got a fan and the peristaltic pump. I'm going to have to wash my uh, little uh, silicone work pad thing here. Co totally blank, blank on what the thing is called. Uh, that particular part of my vocabulary has departed my brain. All right, let's continue removing screws here, see if we can liberate the pump and fan assembly. Oh, also there's uh, these LEDs chase back and forth. Um, there's a, a red, green, and a blue, red, green, blue surface mount LED there uh, with the current limiting resistor, decoupling capacitor, and the blob that controls the chasing back and forth. It's probably just a tiny microcontroller even though you could very easily do it with a decade counter. All right, now let's see what we've got here. We've got the motor with a worm gear attached to the peristaltic pump, and we've got the top of the motor being attached to the fan. So the fan blows through this little channel, which was connected to the back of that little uh, bubble generator, so it blows through, and when you pull the trigger, it wipes the thing, so it blows bubbles while flashing. And then this peristaltic pump here um, pushes the bubble solution into the assembly. Now, can I remove this thing to demonstrate how it works? Um, doesn't look like that's going to be particularly easy to dismantle, at least not quickly on camera. I'm trying to do things all in one cut these days. Because I don't have a computer that's powerful enough to be able to keep up with how much rendering I have to do. Just uh, keep uploading videos at least once or twice a week. I really need my own dedicated rig, but I do not have even remotely enough money to do that. Unless I win the lottery or something. Alright, so a peristaltic pump. Um, let me see if I can figure out how to draw this well. Um, so you're gonna have a, a reservoir of, of fluid here and you'll have a little um, tube coming into it and then that tube is going to go uh, into a little device like this, and that tube's going to come in, go around the outside, and then come back out. 
like this. And that tube tends, that tube has to be made out of a very squishy, flexible material for this to work. So like this, it's actually very nice silicone, very soft silicone tubing. Now on the inside, I'm doing this completely off shot. Let's bring that into shot, there we go. And then also on the inside of this thing, <coughs> um, let's pick a different color. Let's try it. Let's do blue, I think. Yeah, blue works. So on the inside of this is a little round spindle. And on that are these pegs. And on this one, there's only two pegs, but there can be more pegs. And so the motor is attached to this, and that spins. And those pegs, they squeeze the tube shut against the wall of the housing here as they spin. So basically what you're creating is a little bubble of fluid that's being pushed by these spindles. So then they'll, they'll come around and they'll be here, still providing a seal, because this side is pinched closed while this side is open. So there's always a seal so that you don't get water flowing back, or whatever fluid. Oop, that's the stupid dry erase doing its leaky thing again. Um, and it basically moves a small amount of fluid around the pump and then out. And of course, because that fluid is being moved, it's creating a literal vacuum right here, which pulls fluid up through the tube. I hope I, I, I explained that clearly. If, if you have any questions or want more detail, um, ask in the comments below and I'll, I'll try to clarify a little bit. But um, my desire for having un having removed this this pump, and I'm actually just going to go ahead and remove the light effect stuff. Don't need that right now. So we'll go nip and nip. We've got a <clears throat> little decoupling capacitor of some sort on the very badly cropped decoupling capacitor on the uh, motor there. Um. Actually, what the heck, let's see. We had three AA batteries in series powering the thing, so that'll be 4.5 volts. I'll just cheat and use 5 volts, that should be sufficient. Um, now the question is, which way, which is the positive? Actually, I probably should have taken it. All right, so it still works outside of the thing. I wonder if, I can, um, <clears throat> is that totally overdriving the mic? No, it's not too bad. Okay, so I'm gonna see if I can focus down on this. There we go. Oh, I just had a brilliant idea. I am going to connect it to the variable power supply. All right, can you see the spindles on the inside of that? Moving around, they're squeezing the, the, the tubing. And you can see how uh, fluid, that, it's actually running backwards, but that's all right. Fluid that would be accessible on this side of the tube would be pulled through, pushed through by these little rotating uh, cylinders and then pushed out through this side. And in fact, I bet if I put my thumb here or my finger here, it's going to start trying to pull a vacuum on my finger. And I can actually feel, you know, pressure starting to build up. Let's turn that up a little bit. Bring that up to 3 volts. And, uh, see how much of a... Yeah, that, that's pulling a, a pretty substantial vacuum on my finger. So, uh, yeah, that's, um... That's step one of a project that I'm starting to work on. I have a, a deep fryer. I'm hoping I can use this peristaltic pump to help me with the filtration of uh, the oil. Well, it actually automatically filters the oil. Um, it's this neat T-fall. You, you hit the thing on the front, and then the oil drains through a filter and into a reservoir on the bottom. And I want to use the peristaltic pump to bring the oil out of the reservoir and back 
into uh, the uh, the fryer. Um, it's probably just going to be a proof of concept because this little tiny per uh, peristaltic pump isn't going to be able to move a lot of fluid, but it should be educational. Anyway, um, that's all I've got for this video. Uh, I'm about to run out of time for some reason, so if you haven't already, click here to subscribe. Right here is a video that YouTube thinks you'll enjoy. Right here is, uh, I guess, the Teradons playlist, and right here is a link to Patreon, which you can use to help me buy more.